And so on on this particular analysis, you know, we it's clear we see variability. I think it's the the get out clause or the cliche that only time will tell what the the optimal porosity is for bone fixation. Uh, it's it's going to take a uh, you know, decade, uh, possibly more, for us to, to get long term registry level data as to to which implant is simply performing the best. Uh, and indeed, if there is an optimal porosity, we we do know that there are challenges of of potentially loose titanium powder being trapped uh, within the porous uh, meshes. And this is something that we have seen in the past and are actually seeing in some of the work that we're doing uh, right now. And um, not something that we've looked at, but it's, it's something that's real as a concern is that of uh, infection or uh, biofilm formation uh, that may increase as a risk of, with certain pore sizes or uh, porous structures. On the defect side, I mean, manufacturers are doing a fantastic job in, in eliminating um, the vast majority of defects that may occur in their post-processing. But I think it's of note that the, the size, the shape, and the location of the, the implant of the of the defects that we are seeing are such that theoretically uh, there's a, a greater risk of crack formations uh, forming. Um, you know, the, the reality is, of course, that we have not seen any uh, 3D printed implant uh, fracture. Or at least I don't think. I've seen any evidence of that uh, in registry or data or, or otherwise of a fracture occurring. But clearly, as we move to, to thinner wall implants being designed and, and more complex shapes being printed, it's, it's clearly something uh, to be mindful of.